Shalom. Giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, pushing this doctrine of truth to the elect of the nation of Israel, who were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. All right, um, I want to do a response to this lesson that this demon. Uh, response to a video that this demon that you see here um, made regarding Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai being the God of the Israelites only. All right, now he's one of them typical Yah Israelites, as you can see. They think that the Lord is their uh, cousin or one of the homies from off the block, and you can just. Uh, Make his, his his name a nickname. Yah. Yah. Yah this. Yah that. Right? And he's one of them guys. They all think they're smarter than everybody else. They tend to think they're, they know more than the camps. Okay? When I say the camps, I'm referring to uh, the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. And uh, the brothers that are out there teaching the likewise doctrine. Okay? Because those are truly the men of the Lord, okay? Those are the men that the Heavenly Father endowed with the Holy Spirit and gave the understanding of the Holy Scriptures in order to teach it to the rest of us, okay? So anyway, as you can see, this clown has a problem with the fact that we push, according to the Scriptures, that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is only the God of the Israelites and it's true although he is the God of the universe as this clown says all right but he is a tribal deity okay and again these Yah Israelites try to sound deep they try to sound smart right and this is why he's talking about a tribal deity all right well he we know as Israelites that the Lord is only the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob we know that he only sent his son as a sacrifice for the nation of Israel, for the elect of the nation of Israel first, right? And then the two-thirds will be saved on the other side, okay, of judgment. Anyway, without further ado, I mean, just listen to some of the madness that this, this clown is teaching. It sounds like he hates the word, he hates the Bible, he hates the Heavenly Father in terms of what the Heavenly Father stands for. You know, he says he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Israelites, and he doesn't have much favor with the heathen, and he hates the Edomites. Well, that's the essence of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. I don't have a problem with that, nor do the rest of the elect have a problem with that. But this clown has a problem with that. All right, but without further ado, um, I'm going to play maybe five, four, close to five minutes, but um, I'm going to try to address each point because this is important to your salvation to have the understanding of the scriptures. Okay, here we go. Some of you act like it's only the God of Israel, and maybe I think it is now. For some of y'all, is the the God that we, we say when we talk about the God of the Bible. Uh, what you call him, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahuwah, whatever. Is he a tribal God or a tribal deity? Huh? Is he a tribal deity or is it not supposed to be, as we, as some people say, like I open up uh, the, the God of the universe. And I'm using this word God to keep it, keep it in general terms. Is he not the God of the universe and what, or is he only the God of Israel? Only the God of Israel or is he, that's why I say a tribal deity. Because some of you, that's why y'all act like. That's why y'all act like. Because all the time I keep hearing this same stuff. I, when y'all, it, it is like, and I seen some people was comment in the, in the uh, comment on a video where he's only dealing with on the last video I did. He's only dealing with the Israelites. He's only dealing with. The, well, hell, he's a tribal dead to the end. If he ain't dealing with no. Body else, and, and I keep reading it. I ain't gonna even read Psalms. I'm not gonna even read the Psalms 47. Hell, I get tired of that. Damn it, going over this stuff over and over and over again. 
But it does not say that he's only dealing with the damn Israelites. It does say he's only dealing with the Israelites. And the scriptures that point to that, this clown is refuting. Okay? So that's the number one red flag. All right? There's red flags throughout this, this video to tell you that this dude is either an agent or he's just a, a, a disgruntled Israelite. All right? That's y'all interpretation. That's how the hell y'all want it to be. Y'all look that damn foolish. And it wasn't talking about your ass anyway, because you can't even prove you're a damn Israelite. Unless you're trying to use damn Deuteronomy 28 and 68. That damn it, that still don't prove that you know damn Israelite. So, I'm so you can't prove you're an Israelite through Deuteronomy chapter 28. That is the basis of this awakening. Okay? See, and this is how a lot of us came to the understanding that we were Israelites, all right? That is a very, very critical uh, chapter in the Bible because when you read those, those curses, you automatically knew that this was talking about you and your people. You automatically, it automatically resonated with you because you knew without a doubt in your heart of hearts, this is talking about me. OK. And this is how powerful these scriptures are. All right. And this is how, you know, without a doubt in your heart of hearts that this Bible is for you and your people only because it was designed to touch you and move you in such a way. When you heard these prophecies, you heard these curses. All right. You heard the judgment that was going to come upon the nations. It all resonated with you. And that's by design the heavenly father yahweh bashim yahweh shai made it that way okay it's a spiritual book created for spiritual people this is why it affected you the way it did okay don't let these clowns tell you otherwise this this dude is a demon all right he is a freaking demon i'm trying to watch my mouth Try not to use uh, the vulgar language that I usually use, but uh, I mean these clowns—they they really they get under my skin. I'm sick and tired, y'all. I told y'all I'm gonna get flat-footed with it today, and I know some totally some of y'all ain't gonna like this video, but like I told y'all, frankly, I don't give a damn. I'm sick of the foolishness. I don't give a turn off the damn channel. Don't don't turn back on it. You ain't gotta listen to it, but I'm sick of. I gotta address some of this damn foolishness, man. Some of y'all come on this channel with that dumbass stuff. Dumbass stuff. The gospel that we teach is dumbass stuff. Can you, do you hear this clown? <laughs> the elders, y'all, please forgive me, but I'm sick and tired of it, man. Because there's too much damn foolishness going on in the name of Israel, and too many people who claim to be godly people, right? With this dumb stuff out here, causing damn division. But you claim to be so damn godly. We're supposed to be holy and all of this stuff. You're supposed to be teachers and leaders and spiritual guides. You a damn fool out here with this damn fool that y'all teaching, man. I'm sick of this damn stuff, man. I can see why some people turn away and say, the hell with this Bible stuff, man. I don't want to even deal with it. Because sometimes I, I, sometime I promise, I promise y'all the most high is my witness. I feel the same way. Well, good. I mean, you already slated for destruction because you're a bug out. Okay, because you hate what's written in the scriptures. So you're going to be destroyed if you don't repent. Okay, it is what it is. I don't take issue with anything that's written in the Holy Scriptures. That's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, that's what I'm going to follow. That's what I'm going to believe. All right, you know, you get these Yah Israelites that come in a completely different vibration. All right, and they fancy themselves, you know, that they are smarter than everybody else. They're they're better studied than everybody. They don't even understand the narrative of the Holy Scriptures. And as you're going to hear, he's trying to push other books on you that have completely nothing to do with the Holy Scriptures. This is about salvation. This is about preparation for your salvation. Okay? This walk is all about being delivered when Yahawashai returns. Okay? Because when all hell breaks loose, okay? You are going to need to know what to do. All right. And the only instruction manual on this earth that's available for you is the Holy Bible, the scriptures. 
not these other books that this clown is going to mention. Let's continue. I just want to say I don't read really damn doing this stuff, man. I just keep reading my Bible and studying to myself. I'm damn old. Damn all this, but I know there are some people that sincerely who's searching, and a lot of people who listen to these videos and they, they and they pre appreciate the message that come. But there's too many y'all in the masses out here with this dumb, ignorant, damn stupidity stuff. Cause y'all so in damn doctrinated. You and, and, and a lot of Israelites always want to bang on the Christians. Some of y'all worse than damn Christians. Oh, I told y'all y'all ain't gonna like this today. Some of y'all are worse than goddamn Christians. But you act like when you're talking about, well, he's only dealing with Israel only. Well, if he's only dealing with Israel only, then that's a damn tribal God. That if he only want to deal with Israelites. Now, how can, how can you, and I see, I know y'all going to say, well, see, I know you don't understand the scriptures. Now, y'all don't understand the damn scriptures. I understand it uh, uh, totally. I understand ancient Near Eastern literature, not only the Bible. Because it is ancient, the pause of ancient Near Eastern literature. I understand spirituality. I understand all types of religion. I've been a part of it. I you see, whatever he said, ancient something literature, this is the point. Okay? Now, he's going off and delving into other books that have absolutely nothing to do with your salvation. It has nothing to do with the Holy Scriptures. All right? He's talking about books that uh, are about other religions why is he trying to push you got to ask yourself why is this clown trying to push so hard these other books why is he trying to distract you away from what's most important the only thing of importance is the holy scriptures he clearly doesn't have any understanding of the holy scriptures that's why he's pushing these other books and he doesn't understand the scriptures because he's trying to tell you that how about shimmy how is is not the god of the of, of the israelites <laughs> only <laughs> See, I study more than just the Bible. That's what a lot of y'all are stuck in. You don't study nothing outside of the Bible. You don't understand. You don't study nothing else. See, I study a lot of different. Uh, have I actually, uh, uh, as, as when I remember when I was in the uh, Nawabia Nation, we used to call it schools of thought. I've been in different schools of thought. I practiced it. I lived it. I'm, I'm not a person who just, I just study the Bible only. And now y'all gonna say that's your problem that you studied in two, but that's y'all problem. No, that is your problem. Of, you lack of knowledge. That's why you can't understand nothing else. And you can't understand a lot of things that I present because your ass is stagnated in your understanding. You don't even under you don't understand the lit the literature of the Bible. You don't. You don't get it. You don't get it. Like like, like I tried to show y'all the other book that I had, the World Bible. And somebody we were talking about that. That's that's why I say it. It's not the the, the, the Bible is not the, a, a, a world history book. Excuse me. So when you read the book of Genesis. Well, you're right. It's not a world history book. It's a book or history book. All right. That chronicles. All right. The beginning, the rise and the fall and the subsequent rise of the Hebrew Israelites. OK. So it's a history book of sorts for us, for our people only. Now. Can other people draw wisdom out of the Holy Scriptures? Absolutely. But because they're not spiritual people, they're not, it's not going to resonate with them like it's going to resonate with us. They're not going to have the inherent understanding of the Holy Scriptures once they hear it. Okay? Especially to go out there and start teaching it like most of us have. Okay? Because when I learn this word, it instantly resonated with me to the point where I thought I was able to start teaching. Okay? And a lot of brothers. I mean, there are brothers out there that started teaching a lot sooner than I was. I did. Okay? We're going to play another 30 seconds or so, and then we're going to get some scriptures and wrap it up. That's just one narrative. That's just one creation narrative. There are several different creation narratives. Hell, you go, if you go to the tribe of, in, in Mali, Mali the Dongun tribe, they will tell you in their creation story that the um, devil being that came beyond the, sky, the stars, the, what was it, the uh, star system uh, uh, Sirius, that came down and taught them knowledge. There's different uh, traditions way before the Bible was even thought about being printed or even written, even on stone. 
there were all right we're gonna stop it there i mean i i can't i can't stomach any more of this bullshit because I mean, this dude is a, an absolute demon he's a bug out he's telling you about a creation story about the people in mali is that what he said beings that came from outer space before the bible I mean, he's all over the place okay again the narrative of the bible never changed it never changed again it's about the rise the fall and then the subsequent rise of the hebrew israelites okay and that rise is only going to come with the return of our lord and savior yahweh okay when we are going to be the priests of the earth 144,000 under yahweh and then king david all right that's the order of things the heathens are not included in that what the heathens will be included in is they will be tributary they're going to be enslaved for a period of a thousand years you know and that's something that this this clown has a problem with he's got a problem with us teaching that the heathens are going into slavery he's got a problem with us teaching that the edomites notice that he, he didn't even mention the edomites okay the edomites are written in the book all right they are the adversary of the Heavenly Father under Satan, okay? They come after the working of Satan. How do you not mention them? You can mention the Israelites, but you can't mention the Edomites, okay? This dude's a demon, all right? This is about your salvation. You got to do everything that's necessary that's written in the Holy Scriptures in order to be, to deliver, in order to be delivered, okay? The Scriptures say, the Lord said he sent his pastors that will give you knowledge and understanding or feed you with knowledge and understanding I roughly paraphrase it all right he said that for a reason because you're gonna have clowns like this that's gonna come along and tell and teach you otherwise right stick with the scriptures all right which brings me to my first precept here let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. All right, this dude is a demon. He's telling you, no, 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 no. Don't pay attention to what's written in the Holy Scriptures. That's not important. What's important are all those other books that I'm telling you about. What? What? It's all about the Scriptures. Don't let anybody convince you otherwise. Okay, he mentioned Psalms. Let's go to the book of Psalms. 147. Let's start at verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. Wait, what? He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Now he's telling you that this doesn't mean what it says. He's telling you that in spite of what this says, it's wrong. The Heavenly Father's wrong. Okay? King David's wrong. Yahweh is wrong. And they want you to go against the scriptures, or he wants you to go against the scriptures and embrace that universal doctrine of salvation okay which is false it's false it's made up and you got to ask yourself why is this dude trying to convince you why is he trying so hard to convince you that what's already written in the holy scriptures doesn't mean anything okay because if it doesn't mean what it what it says then the heavenly father's a liar he's playing games with us he's playing jedi mind tricks with us right Everything in the Holy Scriptures has to be 100% true, all right, in order for us to be delivered. Otherwise, he's given us false instructions and no one's going to be delivered. Well, we know that's not the case because it's in the Scriptures, especially Revelation, it says that we are going to be delivered from Yahweh Shai, okay? He's going to deliver us. Our bodies are going to be changed. We're going to come back to this earth uh, as New Jerusalem. And we're going to rule on this earth. The heathens are going into slavery for a thousand years. But he's telling you, he's trying to undo everything that was already written. 
He's t he's just dismissing any and everything because he doesn't like the he doesn't like uh, what what the narrative is, right? I mean, this is the most absurd thing I've ever heard of from a so-called Israelite. I mean, and you're gonna have bug outs like this uh, in these last days, but you got to stand firm in what you believe in, okay? Because the scriptures aren't going to lie, all right? They mean what they say. This is the Heavenly Father's word. This is coming straight out the Heavenly Father's mouth through his prophets, okay? Let's go to the book of Joel because he's telling you, no, nah, no, nah, he's not the God of Israel only. Well, J Joel, the book of Joel says otherwise. This is Joel chapter 2, verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. This is the Heavenly Father. In the midst of who? The whole world? Not just Israel, like this clown saying. And that I am the Lord, your God, and none else. Wait, what? I am the Lord, your God, and none else. Well, he's taking issue with that. He's telling you that this doesn't mean exactly what it says. And my people shall never be ashamed. Well, he's ashamed, right? He's obviously ashamed because he's telling you, no, no, no. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai is the God of the universe. Well, he is the God of the universe. Of course, we're not disputing that. He's the only God, right? But he has a chosen people that he's dealing with on a spiritual level, all right? We were procreated for this, for this, um, for this mission, okay? The first fruit spirits, all right? Let's jump down to verse 232 or verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. So you see, brother, you see you're wrong. He says, whosoever, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. Notice it didn't say in Edom shall be deliverance. In Ishmael, uh, there shall be deliverance. In Ham, there shall be deliverance. Why isn't the Lord saying that? Well, because he's excluding those nations because they're not his chosen people. All right. And not all of Israel is going to be saved on this side of judgment. Although the scripture says all of Israel will be saved. And that's true. But on this side of judgment, only the elect are going to be saved and delivered. Okay. The Heavenly Father is very particular about how he wants things done. And who the hell are you to come along and undermine his order, his righteous order? Okay? So don't let any of these bug outs deter you from what's written in the Holy Scriptures. This is your comfort. All right? This is the comfort through the Spirit. Okay? You're endowed with that Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit from Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Right? You get this understanding. This is going to be your comfort. The Lord is not going to have you taking comfort in, in lies and in deception. Okay? The Lord says he wants to be worshipped in spirit. Not only in spirit. You got to walk in the spirit. But he also wants to be worshipped in truth. Okay? He's all about truth. He's not a, a, a liar. He's not a deceiver. Right? The Edomites are the, are the liars. All right, they come uh, after the working of Satan. All right, so he's telling you that the curses of Deuteronomy do not define who you are in terms of an Israelite. Well, again, that's the basis of this awakening, okay, is knowing uh, what you've been through and uh, knowing how to identify um, who we are through these curses, all right? This is how this word was introduced to us, all right? And again, this is by design, man. This is all by design. Uh, let's go to, let's see, 28, Deuteronomy 28, verse 46. Let's start at 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee, all right? They have pursued us. They have overtaken us. And they haven't pursued any other nation. All right. And that's another important thing to remember. These curses haven't pursued any other nations. They haven't overtaken any other nations. They haven't been afflicted by these curses. We've been afflicted by these curses. And this is why it's so infuriating. You know, when you hear these bug outs, not only the bug outs, but the Christians that try to minimize 
okay, our plight in terms of these curses, man. These curses are, are, are is, is hell, all right? You're going through the hell that you're going through because of these curses right now. You're at the bottom because of these curses. You're being dis, dis, uh, despised and, and hated upon, or hated on because of these curses. The other nations hate you because of these curses, okay? You get no respect as an Israelite man because of these curses, right? You're first, you're first fired and last hired because of these curses, all right? Your economic status is what it is because of these curses. So for someone to come along and say, oh, man, you can't use the curses to, to prove that you're an Israelite, bullshit. Because every last one of these curses resonate with me, all right? And I guarantee you, every other brother and sister that read through these curses, that know they're Israelites, especially of the hopeful elect, all right, these curses resonated with you because, you know why they resonated with you? Because you're living it. We are living this through and through, day in and day out. We are under these, God, these curses. And this is nothing to take lightly. And this is why we're working so hard. We're striving to to uh, to walk on that straight and narrow path okay and it's not easy it's not easy and anyway just you know just reading through these curses I do that from time to time and it's just a constant and stark reminder of what we've been through and what we're continuing to go through because we sinned against the Heavenly Father man all right. And this is how you know that you've truly been quickened because you do feel remorseful. All right. You feel very, very remorseful for having committed the sins against the Heavenly Father, having transgressed his laws. And this is why, you know, it's always on your mind to repent and try to do right. OK. And again, only the spiritual are going to see it that way. All right. And he obviously doesn't. He has a problem with this. So, Lockie, let's go on. As you can see, this doesn't sit well with me. And I, I come across videos like this. It just puts a fire in me because we're going through hell, man. We are going through hell. All right, let's get the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 7. Jump down to verse 6. For thou art an holy people. Who? The whole world? The Edomites? No. The Ishmaelites? For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. Well, if he chose the whole world, then we're not special. Okay? So he didn't. Doesn't he have a right to choose a particular people? That he's fond of? Well, of course he does. He's the king of the universe. He gets to do that. Chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Okay? So, the God of the universe is telling you right here. We're above all people on, on the face of this earth. And he has a problem with that. He hates the Heavenly Father's word. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 3. You know this is one of my favorites. I bring this out almost every time I do a lesson. Solicitude for who? The world? No, for Israel. Let's start at verse 3. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Hamashiach, for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Why is Paul only concerned about the Israelites here? Okay. Because you hear the Christians and the Yah Israelites will say, well, those Romans weren't Israelites. They're heathens. No, they're Israelites. That's why he's addressing it as such. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? Okay, only Israelites can be adopted. And the glory, the glory of the kingdom of heaven and all that comes with it and the covenants. We're under the new covenant, brother, with the heathen. No, we're not. Paul just told you it's for the Israelites and the giving of the law and the service of God. And this is one that's often overlooked from, you know, a lot of you uh, 
you Yah Israelites. The service, no, no other nation can serve Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. It's written. It's clearly here. And the promises. Okay, well, I, I came across one of his videos that said that we act like Christians because we listen to Paul over Yahweh Shai. <laughs> oh, man. Whose are the fathers in a of whom, as concerning the flesh, Hamashiach came, who is over all. All right, so it says that Yahushai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, came for the Israelites only. That's what this is saying. Boy, those Yah Israelites, they are going to be destroyed. They are going to be destroyed. If they don't repent. Because they, they act like this is a, a popularity contest. They act like it's it's a game. They don't take this seriously. They don't take anything written in the Holy Scriptures seriously. They don't take things literal when they should take it liter literal or literally. They don't take it spiritually when they should take it spiritually. Right? They're all over the place. That's because the Heavenly Father is not dealing with them on a spiritual level. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Wait, what? Well, he's the God of everybody. He's just not a tribal God. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded, world without end. Okay, so our world is not going to end. It's going to be an eternal world under our King, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Okay? And we're going to rule the heathens, even after their thousand years of slavery, okay? All nations but the Edomites, who are going to be destroyed, pursuant to the book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 18. All right? But they are going to be tributary to us. They're still going to be our servants. They're still going to be under us, okay? But they're going to be allowed to exist, all right, in a righteous world. And that's going to be paradise on earth, all right? And I was just thinking myself hypothetically, what if I was a heathen? And obviously the Israelites are coming back on this earth. And I had to, I had to, you know, serve a thousand years of slavery. Well, would I want to go into slavery? Hell no, I wouldn't want to do a thousand years of slavery. Okay? I would not. However, think looking at things in the big picture, uh, or looking at the big picture in the scheme of things, after that thousand years of slavery. Nothing but righteousness is going to be established on this earth under the Israelites. This is my, my train of thought. This is what I'd be thinking, right? How could it possibly be horrible? How could it be bad? It's going to be beautiful. You're still going to be able to have multiple wives. You're still going to be able to flourish in your own, on your own lands. You're still going to be subject to the law, statutes, and commandments, but you're going to have fresh... Uh, a fresh air to breathe, clean water to drink, clean food to drink, or eat, rather, salakia. Okay? Everything about your existence is going to be better than it is dealing with, uh, uh, you know, under the wicked, under these Edomites. Okay? Well, you don't have any control over anything. And everything wicked is the order of the day. Okay? You're not going to have to worry about your children being corrupted by the alphabet agenda, okay, in the kingdom of heaven. No, you're going to be able to live and flourish and be happy and enjoy your families. So it's a win-win situation, not just for the Israelites, but also the heathens. Now, they're not going to be on our level. Absolutely not. They're not going to have eternal life. But even their existence as it is or will be is going to be better than it is now okay and that's a very important thing to remember you know as heathens okay if you're a heathen and you're, you're listening to this okay and again it's not a black thing because our people are going to look like all nations we're going to look like so-called chinese so-called japanese so-called uh, east indian so-called white people all right our people are going to look like all nations pursuant to the curses all right so, yeah, anybody pushing that black-only uh, Israelite doctrine is, um, is going off, all right? You're a demon because the Heavenly Father is not dealing with that.
All right, let's go to the book of uh, let's go to the book of uh, Second Ezra. Salakia. So he has a problem with all these scriptures. Let's start at verse 55. All this I have spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. As for the other people, who? The heathens, which also come from Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. What? They are nothing. They are nothing, but be like unto spittle and has likened the abundance of them all of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel let's continue at 57 and now O lord behold these heathen which have ever been reputed as nothing they've always been reputed as nothing have begun to be lords over us and devour us because they're in rulership right they're devouring us because of these curses but we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn. Notice he didn't call the whole world. All right. He called the Israelites his firstborn. Thy only begotten. He's the king of the universe. But yet he has an only begotten, a firstborn. Why isn't he including all nations in this? And thy fervent lover. Now that's deep. Are given into their hands. If the world now be made for our sakes. Why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? All right. Ezra is wondering, hey, man, look, man, or Ezra, why do we not run things here on earth since the world was made for our sakes? All right. We're your fervent lover. OK, that's heavy, man. He's not praying for the nations. He doesn't want to see the na The nations are already. They have their inheritance. OK. Us, we were given into their hands for, for a period of time. Okay, but it's not going to stay that way because we're in the end times, man. All right, so let's go to the book of, uh, let's see. Let's go to the book of uh, Romans because you got to be aware, or beware of these bugged out, uh, Yah Israelites or anybody that's not speaking according to the word they said that there's no light in them that's because you're wicked you're not teaching according to the scriptures you're wicked now I beseech you brethren mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them you avoid their doctrine you avoid the wine that they're uh, disseminating all right you avoid the philosophies and the doctrines that they're teaching that contradict or undermine the Holy Scriptures. Okay? You avoid them. Okay? The minute someone starts telling you they're going off and they're telling you that red is black and black is orange, all right, then you avoid them because they're wicked. Okay? And he has an uh, uh, underlying agenda, it sounds like to me. Okay, and I don't know what it is, but he's wicked. It doesn't matter. Okay, they speak not according to this word. There is no light in them. That's what the scripture says. We read that. Avoid them. All right. Let's get a couple more. Let's go to the book of Malachi because it's very important to understand the essence of the Heavenly Father. Okay. You got to understand what kind of power he is. All right. And one of the most important things to understand about him is, is that he doesn't change. Right. For I am the Lord. It's Malachi chapter three, verse six. For I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed, because if he did change, we'd be destroyed because of all the wickedness we've done. OK, I change not. I change not. I change not. OK, so the book of Deuteronomy says that he was we were chosen above all nations on this earth. And the book of Malachi says, I change not. So did he change his perspective on his chosen? Absolutely not. Okay. Is he dealing with other nations? Is he extending salvation to other nations? Absolutely not. 
Are they going to co-rule with us in the kingdom of heaven? Absolutely not. They'll be in the kingdom of heaven. They'll be on this earth, but they were created to serve the Hebrew Israelites. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Okay? They're going to fulfill that aspect of prophecy. Okay? Let's go to the book of uh, 1 Peter. Another favorite of mine. Because this, this is uh, taking place in real time. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. A chosen generation, that's dealing with one nation of people, one bloodline. A royal priesthood. Like I said, the only people in the book of Romans that can serve the Heavenly Father, are the Israelites. So this priesthood consists of all Israelites and an holy nation, okay? That just reinforces the chosen generation. A peculiar people reinforces holy nation and chosen generation that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness, all right? By teaching this gospel, right? Following his law, statutes, and commandments into his marvelous light, this gospel, man, all right? We're called out of darkness to teach this gospel, all right? We were called to do it. Heathens weren't called out of darkness into this mar marvelous light, which in time past, were not a people. No, we weren't. We were Negroes. We were uh, uh, Latinos, we're Native Americans, right? And we were looking like the other nations, but are now the people of Yahweh, which have not obtain mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Okay? This is all about the Israelites. It's not about any other nation, period. They weren't under these curses. Nor will they be un well, they'll be under these curses, Salahakia. Um, when the Heavenly Father sends his only begotten son, Yahushai, to lift these curses, then they'll be put upon uh, the heathens. Okay? And that's just the way it is. You got a problem with that? Take it up with the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Um, I'm going to get one more, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 44. Another powerful scripture. The blessings of Israel. All right? This is an end-time prophecy. Yet, now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Why didn't he choose the other nations? Because they're not chosen. This is just the way the Heavenly Father is rolling. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant. Right? Remember, we read that in the book of Romans. The service of God is only for the Israelites. And thou, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. And my blessings upon thine offspring. Why is he? Why? Why is he keep excluding the heathens? Out of all the scriptures we just read, he's excluding the heathens. This clown, this Yah Israelite, is proclaiming the Heavenly Father is a universal God. He's a God for everybody, but yet all his blessings are only being poured upon the Israelites. Right? Well, that's because this is the Heavenly Father's preference. This is his choice. This is his story. He's the director of this of this uh, this movie. Okay, you don't get to come in and interject and say, Nah, nah, nah. Yahabashim Yahushai, you got this wrong. You can't just be for the Israelites. You have to include all the heathens. All right, and this this whole business about the Edomites being destroyed pursuant to the Book of Obadiah chapter one verse eighteen. That's not right either, Heavenly Father. You should uh, rethink that. Okay. Now, get back to me when you when you had some time to think. I mean, this is the attitude of these Yah Israelites. I mean, I'm saying that as, as in a joking way, but this is this is the way it's coming across. OK, they take issue with what's written in the Holy Scriptures. They're upset. They're angry. And after all the hell that you've been through on this earth. Why in the world would you care about these goddamn heathens? Because they don't care anything about you. They hate you. Okay? I'm tired of going places where I'm looked upon as a second-class citizen. I'm tired of being 
uh, you know, not acknowledged and everybody else is acknowledged when you go into a public restaurant or a public place. They speak to everybody else and they don't speak to you, you know? I mean, I'm used to it, but I'm, I'm just, I'm getting tired of it in the sense that we are the people of the Lord. We're above these clowns on this earth, these heathens. So why would you have a bleeding heart for all the hatred and the bigotry, okay, and the, and the, and the, the discontent that they have for you? I just never understood that from our people. Why do they, they obsess over these heathens being saved along with us? I couldn't care less, okay, about these damn heathens. I couldn't care less, okay? Their lot is their lot, and our lot is our lot, okay? They haven't been through these curses, so why in the hell should they enjoy the privileges of being in the kingdom of heaven with us, okay? You know, co-ruling, all right? If these his Israelites had their way, they wouldn't. these heathens wouldn't go into slavery, all right? They would get everlasting life along with us, right? So we wouldn't have anybody to rule over. We couldn't get recompense for all the evils that they committed against us. Who in the hell? And that just goes to show you how unrighteous these Israelites are. The Heavenly Father is all about balance. Okay? He's not going to have create the kingdom of heaven and then allow all these heathens to skate on in the kingdom of heaven without being punished for what they did to his people. Okay? A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. Anyway, that's all I have. Uh, all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Shalom.